Hello friends, and hello Astrid, hello. And welcome to Figure Study, where we are finally taking a look at Mastermind Creation's next big thing, and that is Eris Coulter. I'm gonna try to keep the run up to this brief, because there is a fair bit I want to say about this figure, but basically, this was originally an April Fool's joke uh, about a year or so ago, and I was extremely, extremely disappointed that it ended up not being real. And then this past year, MMC was just like, oh, by the way, it's real, and you can buy it. So I immediately jumped on that and got the pre-order on like the first day, and then waited like months and months and started to finally come out. But it is finally here, and as I'm sure you've seen in the hundreds of other videos for this figure that have gone up recently because everyone's talking about it, it is fantastic. Yes, it is. Yes, it is fantastic. So from what I understand of the backstory of Eris Coulter as a character, Eris is basically like a shape-shifting assassin or something like that, where she can basically copy and mimic the abilities, and in many cases, uh, elements of the physical appearance of various other characters. So in this case, for her first figure, she has obviously mimicked the look and abilities of Tarn, or Mastermind Creation Sculptor. As with virtually everyone else who knows about this figure, I am super excited to see what MMC does with this, because they are so good, so good at repaints and remolds, and this is... She's curling up in my lap now. But yes, they are so good at repaints and remolds that I, I just cannot wait to see what they do with this figure, because this is already incredible. Oh god, 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 no, 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 no. She's licking my ear. So, moving on to the figure proper. I'm just gonna start referring to the figure as Eris from this point on, because it's just less awkward. But yeah, Eris's tank mode is really pretty slick. It's a pretty nice approximation of a tank that only really falls apart when you look at it from the back of the turret, and even then just barely. And on the underside, you can kinda sorta see the head poking out there, and like, robot mode fists up around here. It's if you're looking at it from the bottom. So not a huge deal. But yeah, there's lots of nice detailing here. I like the multiple shades of purple and purpley blues that they've got going on. Like the little more or less gold highlights and accents and a little bit of silver here and there. The turret itself is incredible, which I'll get into later. And it's of course got the uh, Tarn slash Coulter style double barrels on the front, and it's just, it's a great tank. And it does rotate, the turret does rotate around, and it does roll, but uh, this desk is not the best surface for it. I'm gonna try, though. So when you put it down and roll it, it, yeah, on my desk, it's just my desk. I'm, I promise you that. The surface of this desk is just a little bit too slippery for it, but it does actually roll, and it rolls on actual plastic treads. And I know people know about this, but in case you don't, these are incredible. They're segmented plastic tank treads that actually... Like, look at how those spin. That's incredible! But it does actually roll incredibly well on a surface that is not as slick as this desk. Uh, you just have to take my word for it for now. But yeah, it's, it's really nice. I don't know what else to say, I just really dig this little tank mode. It's a lot of fun, it can... it can kinda pivot up and down slightly, ever so slightly, but mostly it's just the fact that you can turn it is great. And I just love this little tank mode, and it is incredible what this ends up turning into. That's pretty much all I can really say about the tank, so let's just launch right into those size comparisons. Alright, starting off, here is Eris with the standard deluxe squad, and as you can see, her tank mode is pretty chunky. It's not that much bigger than a Deluxe, but it is bigger than a Deluxe class vehicle. It's going to be really interesting when this transforms, believe me. For another comparison that I'm sure everyone is probably tired of seeing at this point, but I still feel like it's necessary to make, here she is with Mastermind Creations Coulter, and Coulter's tank mode is noticeably larger and beefier. Keep that in mind for when we get to the robot modes. And here she is with the duck tank. Okay. Time to transform Eris into her robot mode, and this is a really interesting and 
surprisingly straightforward transformation considering everything that's going on here, but then again, it's mastermind creation, so what do you expect? First thing is to work on the legs, and uh, for anyone who's not familiar with this figure, you might be surprised to find out that the legs are actually what the turret is made up of. So the first thing you want to do is bend these cannons down a little bit. The reason you want to do that is because of the way they kind of fit over this section here. They kind of fit over that groove. It makes it a little bit easier to pop the legs out. Then you want to pull the legs out. Just kind of give it a tug. This is a lot more difficult to do on camera when I'm not actually looking at it. Okay, pop the one side out and the other side. It's a similar deal. You just kind of pop it off to the side and then pull this bit out. And this bit, when you're going back into the tank mode, there is a slot right there and a tab on the underside of this little cannon configuration. You want to make sure that slots in first and then you close the legs in around it. Because the legs will peg in, but you want to make sure that that tab is sorted first. So, with this piece removed, this curls in, and these rotate around, and this will become Eris's arm cannon. Put that off to the side. Now for the rest of the legs. So, first thing to do is there are these double hinges up in here. You want to hinge these out. So you can see how it's kind of compressed here. You want to pull it out like this. So that gives you more room to, uh, to work with. With that done, you can uncurl what will become the toes from inside of the uh, thigh armor. So uncurl that. And then this little heel section here actually pegs into the side of the thigh. So you want to unpeg that swing the leg or ankle out a little bit. Then this will uncurl at the knee and uh, you, can, you can see this joint here is meant to bend this way so that the taps and slots that are in there kind of line up. So you start to bring out the knee. Also this little knee pad you want to pull that out of the way just so that you can straighten out the leg and then push it back in. I've seen different ways that people handle the knee, uh, the knee pad. Some people have it just kind of flush against the leg, some people will angle it so that it's more pointed out. I think I prefer having it pointed out a little bit. I feel like that more closely uh, homages Coulter's look. From there you can straighten out the calf, shin, whatever section there, straighten out the ankle. And then rotate foot down and rotate heel down to make the leg. And then the last bit to do for the leg is this bit in here. So you want to hinge this up and that will kind of suck into the thigh. And then there's actually a little sliding door here, like right up here. I find it's best to rotate the thigh grab the little door, and then hold the door in place while rotating the thigh back. And that tends to get that little piece going. There we go. And this here will slide down and cover up that gap in the thigh. And let me just take care of this real quick. And there we have Eris's uh, legs done. And her, her Gerwalk mode is a bit odd. Okay, next up is the upper body. So to start with, you want to grab the fists and just kind of angle them up a little bit, just to kind of get things out of the way. And then these front tread pods here, they kind of pull out and down because they peg in in a few places. So you want to wiggle those out and those will rotate down. Pull out and down, rotate it around. And now those are out of the way, so that keeps the uh, the arms nice and free. With that done, we can now take care of the arms. So, we want to unpeg the arms, and they peg in in a couple of spots, kind of down here and up here. And as you unpeg the arm, you want to rotate it around and pull it down. And it's got, there's like a series of hinges that you kind of have to, it's hard to explain, you have to kind of get a 
feel for how you need to orient these hinges. These little bits right down in here, you really need to orient those a specific way for things to be able to peg in correctly because, as you can see when I peg this, there's like this little tab right there that pegs into the side of the arm, so you want to make sure things are oriented in that very specific way in order for the, uh, the arms to be able to actually peg in. With all that done, now you want to move these hinges up. And these, these little bits, this hinge right here is pretty stiff. When you move that, you just kind of want to brace it with something. I usually use my thumb and kind of push that in so that it is more, uh, you want the shoulders kind of up like this. With that done, I'm going to rotate the arms just to get them out of the way, split these pod sections, and with those split, this panel here can flip up and peg in to make the chest. And now there's a hinge here that you use to rotate up to bring the torso to the proper alignment. Then, I want to rotate this around. That'll get the top and bottom half of your orange properly. Then, this bit on the back that double hinges down and fills in the back. These rotate themselves at the base here, so I'm going to rotate them. There's like this little track down here, you can kind of see this groove. You want the pods to be able to sit in that. So rotate that around. I'm going to try and show it better here. You can rotate this around and up. And that fills in that little gap there. And uh, we'll worry about the arms and the back pods in a second. There are these little clamps on the side. This actually locks the waist in place because there are a lot more joints in that midsection than you might think at first, but this locks that in place for the tank mode, so you want to pop those out and those swing down and sit inside the uh, side of the pelvis section. The rotation that was up here is now blocked because of the way the figure's put together, but you get that rotation down here in the waist as well as ab crunch and side to side tilt, so yeah, that unlocks all that. Now to finish off the back pods, there are these panels here that fold down, unpeg and fold down, and reveal some extra detail. And then this all just kind of folds in, rotates up, and then I'm gonna rotate the pods around, and there are, it's difficult to see, but there are these little slots on the sides of the pods here, and these tabs on the stalks that the pods are attached to. And you want to kind of bring that up, and the tab will sit inside the slot for the back pod, and that will keep the back pods in kind of a stock, straight up position. The arms are really simple, you just unpeg this little flap here and bring this down and you want to keep this uh you want to keep this straight accordion this down and then fold this back in and that will close off the forearm lock everything together and fill everything out you can bring the wrist down and there you go and last but not least there is the head rotation, and uh, I'm going to lower these pods a little bit so I can see better, and also, uh, worth noting, the head rotation on this thing, very tight. Not alarmingly tight, but very tight, and the problem with that is because the mask that the figure comes with doesn't hold on super well, it's really easy to accidentally knock that off. Anyway, with all of that done, Eris Coulter is now finished. Her transformation is complete. She is in robot mode, and she looks utterly fantastic. Also, don't want to forget the cannon pegs onto her forearm. There is a little slot in the center there, a little peg there, and it just pegs on, and now she's complete. So yeah, um, this figure is amazing. The transformation is kind of what I've come to expect from Mastermind Creations, in that it's really not that complex but it accomplishes a lot, and it's really kind of intuitive, and the engineering is, for lack of a better term, brilliant. 
My only real gripes in terms of the actual engineering on this figure is the mask pops off a little too easily, and the little windows that fill in the uh, thigh gaps, they are... I, I wish they were tighter, or that they had like a kind of soft locking point for when they're closed, because it's really easy to bump them out of place when you're rotating the thighs, which not a huge deal at all, but you know, little gripes. But yes, Eris Coulter looks amazing. She is basically Lady Tarn, which is what that April Fool's joke originally teased, and it is just incredible. There are certain things about the proportions that I feel like, you know, would have been nice if it more closely matched that original render, but you're trying to make something like that in a physical form that does transform into a vehicle mode, so I can understand some compromises have to be made for that kind of thing, and that's totally fine. Coloring here is great. It is very, very similar to Tarn slash Falter, except she's got more of like a grayish tone than uh, white. The purples are a little bit lighter. There's less gold, but there is still gold. She's still got what is basically the Decepticon mask, which we'll see in more detail in a minute. And of course the big dual cannon arm cannon, which is great. But that has added functionality where you can actually pop the different cannons off and give her like one cannon on each arm, which is pretty cool. To do that, just pop this bit off, and then the cannons themselves separate. They just unplug here, it's a simple peg and port kind of deal. And those will peg over these little tabs on the sides of the forearms, which yes, they're like rectangular tabs, but these will actually peg in place. So you can totally peg them on, like so, and have Eris basically dual wielding cannons, one on each arm. So if you wanted to differentiate her from Coulter a little bit more, you could totally do that. I haven't really found a good place to put this when you're doing this, though. There might be an official place for it. I don't know what that is. The back pods themselves are... I know some people have complaints. I don't mind them at all. I think they look totally fine up there, but if you wanted to change it around, you actually can because there are enough joints back here that if you wanted, you could just disconnect the back pod and like bring it down and turn it into something kind of akin to hip armor. Something like that. You could swing it around that way. Like, you've got options. She's also shockingly stable. I've got her kind of plunked down. She is leaning forward slightly to kind of deal with the balance of the, uh, the back the back pods there. But like, straightening her out a little bit, she's still fine. And like, she's not, you know, if you bump her too hard, she'll fall forward. But then if you compensate a little bit more for the, uh, for those back pods, then, you know, she's, She's nice and stable. A lot of the weight is actually down in the legs, too. Like, holding the figure like this, there's still a lot of weight down here, because there is a lot of die cast in this, so that definitely helps for the stability. You just kind of plunk her down, and she's not really going to be going anywhere. Bringing her in to look at the detail, there is just some really nice detailing, and color separation, and sculpting going throughout those legs, and I love how they become the turret. Like, Looking at these legs like this, it doesn't even look like they transform. The chest decoration is very, very similar to Coulter slash Tarn, though slimmer, obviously. She's got the shoulder treads, which again, I love how those roll. It doesn't have the double stack treads that Tarn does, but she's not Tarn, she's, you know, mimicking his look. And then there's that mask, and that mask is great. I do like it a lot. I think it's pretty cool that it's like, it's not exactly the Decepticon symbol, but it's pretty close, and it definitely homages the character that she's meant to homage. But this is coming off once I'm done with this video and going in the box, because I have no need of it. Uh, and you'll see why in just a second. But yes, you can keep the mask on for transformation. It's not necessary, and I generally don't want to keep it on for transformation, because it does hold on there really nicely. Like, it's not falling off. That mask is on there. But it's really pretty easy to bump out of place, which is kind of a pain in the butt. 
but I would rather it pop off easily than be pegged on very securely and snap off. But regardless, you take this thing off and you are greeted with probably the best aspect of this figure. I mean, look at that head sculpt. That is amazing. As I understand it, this is meant to homage uh, Death Saurus or Dazarus's wife slash girlfriend or something like that in one of the comic books. I don't know enough about that. I just know this head sculpt is one of the most incredible Transformer figure head sculpts I've ever seen. Love all the gold accents, love the shape of the head and how you've got the kind of Death Saurus or Dazarus like extra eyes above the forehead kind of thing going. A really nice pop of like pinkish purple in that gold head crest detail is fantastic. And they bring in a little bit of this, uh, you can kind of see it here, this kind of bluish purple here that brings some of that into the uh, head area as well. She's got little cat ears. The face looks fantastic. She looks like she has this very kind of feminine look, but also a very like, I will f*** her sh up kind of look. And that's not even with the mask on. And I just love this. I mean, the mask is cool. Bringing it in closer, you can see there is some nice detailing on the mask, and they've even painted a little bit of black around the outside, and like some red on the eyes, and it looks great. But this, I feel like, really robs the figure of that incredible head sculpt. This is how she is going to be displayed from now on, because I love this too much to cover it up. Before we launch into the size comparisons, I also gotta talk about the articulation, because the articulation on this figure is just as incredible as the actual concept and design and detailing of it. So starting with that absolutely gorgeous head, it's on a ball socket and stock, so it can move up and down on the little stock, but it can also move up and down on the ball socket, it can tilt to the side, and of course can rotate. It's that ball socket itself, that's the, that's the tough part. The arms can go out, pretty darn well. There's a little bit of butterfly motion because of the way it transforms, so that's really nice that that's built in there. And of course the arms can rotate around 360, and they even go around the back pods pretty easily. You just have to like bring the arm out slightly. You do also get a bicep swivel. And then for the elbow, this is really cool. There is, and I'll do this arm because it doesn't have a giant cannon on it. There is a single joint there that gets you about 90 degrees, but there's a second joint in here that is just for articulation. This has no part in the transformation. This little black piece here is a separate joint entirely that can move up and give you a double jointed elbow. You can bring the arm up that far. So yeah, you've got a lot of bend on that elbow, and the treads, it goes around the treads. It's actually designed with like this kind of U-shape, so when you bring that joint up, it goes around the treads and doesn't impede it at all. The waist, you've got the rotation, you've got side to side, and you also have some ab crunch and tilting backwards, but there's a second joint for ab crunching. This joint in here, there's a, there's a joint inside the pelvis, but there's a joint right here that also bends forward. So when you bend the figure forward and kind of hit the maximum for that ab crunch, you can then go forward even further using that other joint, and you can crunch forward that far. It's kind of a bear to get straightened out again, though. As for the hips, you do get that all the way around rotation. Uh, that rotation is on a V-shape, which can be a little bit of an impediment, but because of all of the thigh swivel action going on in there, it's not really that big a problem. And there you can see what I'm talking about with this getting bumped out of the way really easily. You do have a thigh swivel here. Uh, you can go out about this far, but because of that double hinge in there, you can actually use that to get yourself a little bit more in terms of going out. I suppose you could say that the thigh rotation isn't that much, but that's just the upper thigh rotation. There's a secondary rotation right above the knee, so that gets you pretty much all you need. There is also a single knee joint, but you saw how deep that knee joint was for the transformation, because you bend this down and it goes all the way down. And for the lower part of the leg, you also get oops, that in place. You get ankle rotation, you get ankle tilt, 
which is pretty darn good. You can also use this joint up here, though I don't really personally have a use for it. For forward and backward motion, the front of the foot and the heel are on kind of like uh, separate joints, so you can move the toe forward and up, and the heel can kind of move back and up independently. So it kind of approximates a forward and backward motion on the foot, which is nice. And then the toe itself can move up, can point down, and then the tip of the toe can also point down. It can't go up because of the way it's engineered. I think one other gripe that I have with the design of this, and it's a really minor thing, is the fact that you've got this really nice painted detail on the inside of the heel here, but it's on the inside of the heel, and the outside is just plain black, and uh, I don't think it's a huge deal, it's just kind of like, it would have been nice if that silver was maybe brought around to the outside. I don't know. Also, like... I almost forgot to talk about those hands. Those hands, my goodness. There is a ball joint at the base, so you get some waggle there. There is a hinge right above that, so you can hinge forward and back that way. There's a ball joint at the base of the thumb, so that gets you all that, like, rotation and whatnot. There's a hinge above that. There's a second hinge right above that, for the tip of the thumb. The fingers all have multiple hinges, where they can hinge in there, they can hinge in there, and then they can hinge in at the very tip. And in addition to that, they also even have little hinges in the area where they connect to the hand to spread out. There's so much articulation in these hands. It is a little nerve-wracking that these fingers are so tiny. So far, I haven't had any real problems. I popped one of the uh, fingers off of one of the hands, I forget which one, when I was transforming her into uh, tank mode for the first time. I moved something the wrong way, and things butted up against other things, and that caused the finger to pop off. But it just popped off. It didn't break. And I just popped it back on and everything's been fine. And I will also say, the fingers feel loose. Like, they're really easy to move, but at the same time, as you can see, they hold a pose just fine. Like, they're not gonna fall out because they're so small, their own weight isn't really going to affect them. But uh, they do feel a little loose. All right, we're bringing back the mask for the size comparisons just because, yeah, I wanna do that with Coulter. But, here is Eris with the standard Deluxe Squad, and a lot like Ocular Max Azalea, you've got a relatively compact alt mode, though Eris's is less compact, that turns into a very tall figure that pretty much just has this on the back as kibble. I am blown away by this. Now for the comparison that a lot of people have probably already seen, but you might be interested in, uh, here is Eris with Coulter. As might be a bit of a shock, because it's definitely a surprise to me, even though I kind of knew it's coming. She's as big as Coulter. Not as bulky, not as massive, but she's just as tall. And that's incredible to me. Hi, family. Can you leave that alone, please? So yes, while not as bulky as Coulter, Eris is as tall, and that is bonkers to me. And here you can also see the difference in the stylization of Eris's mask versus Coulter's mask. There you can get a better look at the two masks side by side, and yeah, there's much more stylization going on with uh, Eris's mask, and also much more coloration, because she's got the black and red painted in there, and Coulter's is just a mask. I think it's also worth pointing out just how much more boring Coulter's unmasked face is. Like, that's a dark robot face with red eyes, and Eris's face is just, there's so much more personality to it. Uh, yeah, so he's gonna keep his mask on. We are not done with the Mastermind Creations comparisons, because I figured, why the heck not, I'm gonna go all out. So I'm gonna do a comparison with all of the MMC reformatted figures I currently own. So, here she is with Commodus. Here she is with Tyrantron, and she's only a tiny, tiny bit shorter than Tyrantron. 
Yes, I know I have to make a video on Tyrantron. It's on my list, but it's a very long list. Anyway, here she is with Ultio. And Ultio's mold mate, Aether Beta. Here she is with Nitro. And with Nitro's mold sibling, Exodus. I know I need to make a video on Exodus as well. But here she is with Dicamus. And uh, I really like how, even though Dicamus is definitely bulkier, she is definitely taller. And with Dicamus's mold partner, Titanica. With Turban. With Nemo and Motif. Yes, I know. Gotta make a video on Nemo and Motif as well. And I also have to make a video on Optus Pexus. I bet you thought we were done with the size comparisons, but we are not done. Here she is with the Ocular Max Azalea Alternative, and this is the Azalea I was referring to before that does that super compact alt mode thing into a much taller robot. And as you can see here, Eris is an even much taller robot. Here she is with Masterpiece Soundwave, and with Masterpiece G2 Sideswipe, with Magic Square's Nemesis Colors Light of Freedom, which is basically MP10 and MP44 height. Here she is with the tease for the next figure study video, and the duck tank. And that is going to do it for Mastermind Creations Eris Culture. Look at this. This thing is amazing. Posability is fantastic. The amount of expressiveness that you can get out of all of those articulation points is incredible. The sculpt, the engineering, the head sculpt, it's all so wonderful. A couple of minor gripes, in particular those sliders around the insides of the thighs that would have been nice if they locked in place a little bit better. And the fingers, a little loose, but they still hold their pose. And like the mask pops off kind of easy, but who freaking cares? But this figure is amazing, and I'm just so glad I was able to get my hands on her because I didn't realize just how limited a release it was going to be. I just saw pre-orders available now, and it's just like, I am getting that because I wanted that last year, but I found out it was a joke, so it's like, oh, well, I guess no figure for me, but then they actually made it, and so, yeah, I had to jump on it. If you are interested in getting an Eris Culture for yourself, currently uh, she is no longer available as far as I understand it. She was available as a Planet Steel Express exclusive, so you can't get this particular figure right now, possibly ever, unless you check eBay for irresponsible uh, aftermarket prices, but from what I understand, according to TFW, Mastermind Creations is most likely going to do a kind of mass market retail release, for lack of a better term, of this figure in slightly different colors, like slightly darker or slightly lighter purples, I'm not entirely sure which. But basically, if you're patient, there's a pretty darn good chance you're still going to be able to get Eris Culture for yourself. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, I have gone on more than long enough at this point. This video is like over an hour and a half long, so uh, that is going to do it. So thank you everybody for watching. As I've said before, there is a Patreon now, and so if you like what I do and feel like monetarily supporting me, not necessary, but if you feel like it, it would be much appreciated. You can check that out either in the description down below or it will be in the end card of the video. Thank you again for watching, and as always, art is more than meets the eye.